Hey everyone. So today I want to talk about what was for me possibly one of the most transformative moments in my drawing career. I've been working as a professional artist for over 30 years, drawing for a living. And it wasn't until several years into my career that I started to take figure drawing seriously. And it was in one of those early classes that I was shown something that completely changed the way that I approach figure drawing and completely changed my drawing in, in general. And that was how we hold a pencil. So I know that sounds crazy, but trust me, um, you'll see what I mean. So here's the thing. I got a image the other day from someone on Instagram. People tag me all the time, uh, you know, as they're doing their, their drawings um, from the exercises, which I love to see by the way. So please continue to do that. But someone tagged me the other day and a light bulb went off and then I started going through I just looked at some of those other photos, the images that I've been tagged on, and I noticed a reoccurring theme, which is 99% of people, when they're drawing, they're holding their pencil like this. Now, obviously, this is how we hold our pencil or our pen when we're doing handwriting. You may have noticed from my other videos, I hold my pencil like this. And I wanna discuss the differences and why I think that this is such an important thing to, to discuss, right? So let's, let's draw and I want to try and explain what it is that I'm thinking conceptually with this idea. Okay, so what I've done here, I've actually flipped the camera of the down view because I know most of you are right-handed and I really want it to be something that you can understand um, as a right-hander rather than trying to interpret what I'm doing with a left hand. So I'll, I'll flip the camera back at some point, but let's get started. So as I'm holding the pencil like this, the first thing that you'll notice is how little wrist movement there is, right? I'm just gonna draw something really simple here. It really doesn't matter for, for the example, but I'm drawing with the elbow and the shoulder. I'm drawing with my arm and I'm not drawing with my wrist, right? This is conceptually one of the most important things to be considering with this idea. So as I'm going in and I'm, I'm drawing, what it forces me to do is it forces me to think about large ideas, right? The thing is when we hold a pencil like this for handwriting, it's a very detail-oriented way of drawing. We generally tend to draw smaller, and we tend to think about detail rather than large ideas. When I'm holding the pencil like this, I can really get in in a more rhythmical way. I can get in large ideas because I'm drawing with the hand. I'm not trying to do this, right? This is one of the most important things, honestly, that you can take away from this is you're, it forces you to think about large ideas. You can transfer all of these concepts once you, once you kind of internalize it. You can then trans transfer it over if you know for some reason you need to be drawing in this type of manner. These things will translate over. But the thing is, we want to think about large ideas rather than detail. And holding the pencil like this really helps conceptually. With, with it. Somehow it flips something in our mind about our approach and the way that we think about drawing. It's really hard to explain beyond that. Um, all I would say is you're gonna have to trust me on this. Um, but here's the thing, right? We've discussed before, and I do think that actually this is a good point to bring up something else, which is the materials you're using. I notice almost no one that is following my classes or trying to improve in their figure drawing is working with either charcoal or on new, smooth newsprint, which I, I've suggested in the past. There's a reason I use these materials, especially when teaching or trying to learn something, which is the charcoal pencil and the smooth newsprint are so adaptable. They're incredibly forgiving. You know, if I was trying to work with charcoal on a, a paper, a heavier paper with more tooth, erasing or working light in the way that I am here becomes incredibly difficult. 
Um, whereas I, I can adjust things and I can move things around um, with these materials in a very, very simple way. So it's much more um, forgiving in that respect. So I'd say anyone that's following my classes that really wants to kind of improve and really follow what I'm doing, then I would strongly suggest that you follow every aspect of what I'm doing and not just like, oh, well, I'm going to take this and I'm going to take that. Try and immerse yourself in the entire experience. Um, you'll also notice, look at the size I'm drawing, right? Um, I've got an example here. I don't remember the last time I did a figure drawing that was smaller than this. What is this? A3, I think? Um, I see so many people drawing tiny. Now, I believe that that comes from a, either um, an insecurity in their work. You know, people that tend to be more timid and want to draw smaller when they're unsure of what they're doing. But the reality is if I'm drawing larger and I'm drawing in this way and drawing with the elbow and the shoulder, they allow you to draw larger, easier in a way. Um, I'm giving myself room to breathe. I'm giving myself an, a, a platform where I can put in detail, I can put in subtlety, and I'm not trying to just sit there doing it like this, right? Putting in little details. I'm working large. Um, I would strongly suggest anyone that's trying to learn this don't hinder yourself by working in a tiny little sketchbook, maybe working this big and trying to work with like a mechanical pencil or something, right? You're, gonna have so, you're giving yourself so many hurdles to overcome by working in that way. Now, could you be working with a, a graphic pencil, a graphite pencil like this on a paper with a bit more tooth? You could. And also I would say this graphite won't stick to this um, to this newsprint very well at all. Um, it just doesn't read well. Um, but these materials, the scale that we work at, um, it's everything, right? It, it, it makes our lives so much easier. Now, I had someone comment the other day asking, um, how did you get the midtones in your drawing? And the reality is, like, let's say I go in now, okay, I've, I've roughed out here roughly where I want everything, you know, not, not in any great detail or frankly with too much accuracy, but close enough for the demo. But now if I, I could go in, let's say, and I just say, okay, well, I want to now start, you know, refining these ideas and I go in darker, right? Like something like this. Let's say on this side, I come in something like this. I don't know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. The point, the, the point that does matter is that underdrawing that I put in there, it's acting as halftone, right? We're getting halftone for free purely by the virtue of the process, right? If I'm, if I'm putting in, for example, here, the, the rectus femoris coming down this way, attaching at the knee, and, I, and I've drawn that stuff out, or I'm thinking about what's going on, you know, down in the calf down here. Um, when I go in and I put the, my, my final line on top, that, that underdrawing that I had in there, it's acting as a half tone. It's giving me light and tone for free. So, that's also another benefit or a byproduct of using the materials that I use and, and the reason that I use the materials that I use, right? So please consider if you're, if you're serious about this process and you're serious about following along with, with my, my approach, please consider um, switching to, to these tools while you're working. There's not to say there isn't a place for drawing like this. And in my day job as a, an animation artist, I, this is the way I work exclusively because I'm working on a, a Cintiq and I, I, it's just, you can't, what you simply can't work with, like this with a stylus. Um, in saying that, I know animators that when we were working on paper, they would do their rough pass holding a pencil like this, right? Coming from the figure drawing kind of philosophy. So I just wanted to share that with you today. I can't tell you how much it, it's gonna help. For me, as I said in the beginning, it was a transformative moment. 
when you start doing this, it might feel clunky, right? It's going to feel a little bit awkward. It's, it's not what you're used to. But I can guarantee that if you give it a little bit of time, and it won't take long, just give it a little bit of time to kind of settle in, you'll find that when you go back to holding a pencil like this for smaller work or whatever, you, you'll, you'll have a different kind of mindset. So give it a go. Let me know how it goes. Um, if, you, if you come up against any roadblocks with this approach, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to, to address them and, and we can explore together how we can kind of evolve and, and um, problem solve. Um, but as I said, if, if there was one lesson I could give and I only had one lesson to give, this would probably be it. <laughs>